Hey guys, I'm just doing a simple tutorial on replication. Now this is not going to be detailed at all. Um, the idea here is I've had a lot of people since the multiplayer template has come out asking about replication and how it works because obviously you guys want to expand your own and put your own content into the template. So I'm going to give a super super basic rundown of how to get started with replication um, doing just a very simple week thing in world. So we'll start with a blank third person project. Uh, let's just call it replication tutorial. Um, so what we're going to do is set it up so that both the server and the client can cause a change in the world and it replicates across to the other players. So let's get rid of all this stuff just quickly. So we've got an empty spot. And just rebuild lighting very quickly. Okay, so first of, um, if we fire up two players, so the way you do this is just here, just click on the arrow next to play, change how many players you want. Um, I don't like running in the viewport, I prefer using this option here. So you can see in here we've got two players and they replicate. Their jump and their move and everything matches on the other one. So that's, you know, your movement is all set up to go to begin with. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to create a blank actor, which is just for a test, so we'll just call this test actor, and we'll open this guy up and we'll just add a static mesh into it. Compile and save. Now we're going to get rid of this logic here, and what we're going to do is we're going to settle up so that when you press a button, the mesh changes, and that's all we're going to do. Um, so we'll make a custom event and we'll call it change mesh. Just simple. Um, now we'll get this one here, drag in, hold control and that gives you that. You can also drag in and, oh never mind, you don't need to worry about that. Um, so drag in, drop that guy and you type in set static mesh. Now we don't want the test actor one, we want the actual function here. We hook that up to that event and we drag this guy over to here. So what this means is we're going to, <clears throat> when we call this event, we will have an input which is a type of mesh and we will set the static mesh. Now we're going to set this up with a default mesh just of the one meter cube and we're going to set that to a scale of four times just to make it a bit easier to see. Which also means we need to move this guy up 200 units there. Okay, so now that's done, let's jump into our third person character and just somewhere on the graph we're going to use the button Q, so you just right click press Q and that brings up this. So what we can do there is make it so that um, when the player presses Q something happens. Now to get the actor from the world what we're going to do is get all actors of class, this one here, and set this to the actor we made which is called test actor. So what we're going to do is this gets every single actor of that type. Now we're going to do for each loop here, click on that one, connect you up, and then from here we can go change mesh, is that what we call it? Yep. And now let's say we're going to set this now to the linear stair static mesh. So let's save, compile that, and now let's run that. We need to actually add one of those into the world. So I come back here, drop a test actor in the world. Run that, press Q, and it changes on the server. We press Q on the client, it changes on the client. So what's happening here is it's only changing it locally. So if we start with the client, you can see it doesn't happen on the server, but then we can do it on the server. Um, one other thing to note is it says up here which one is which. This says server, this one says client, so if you have three running it'll give you client two and so on. So, what we need to do here, start off with, is jump back into this test actor. And so what we're going to discuss here is a couple of types of replication. Start off with class defaults, this is box here replicate. Now you would think that would mean that's going to work, 
but it doesn't. However, you can see that the lighting did update, so it's this weird situation where it, it knows it wants to work, but it doesn't quite, basically. So then, what we want to do is this change mesh event here. There are three options, uh, four options in here. Not replicatable is what it's set to by default. So that means it just runs on the client that calls it. We've got run on server, run on only client, and multicast. Now multicast runs on everything. So we'll log into that and we'll make it reliable. Now the reliable is, basically if it's reliable, then it will jump to the head of the queue over things that aren't. So something that's important to gameplay should be reliable, whereas something that doesn't necessarily need to happen immediately can be left unreliable, and it will happen eventually. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And there we've got that changing on the server. But not on the client. The reason for this is that it's running on all based on where it's called. So at the moment we're only calling it locally and because the client has no authority, it's not allowed to tell the server what to do, it won't change what happens on the server. But because the server can, it will change on the client. Hopefully that makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to disconnect that, move that up here and put that on its own new event called cus uh, so custom event and we'll call this uh, update mesh because we don't want to get confused and call them all the same thing. So we'll plug that one in there. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to basically run different things based on whether it's running on the server or client. So this one here, this update mesh, um, will run locally as we saw, because that's just this exact same thing here. So what we want to do is there's this node called switch has authority. And what this does is it checks, you can actually open it up and it just looks like this. But basically, whatever calls this node, it will check if it has network authority or not. So in this case, we're running from a character, so this character calls this node. If this character is the playable server character, which is this guy here, as you can see it says server up the top, then it's going to say, yes, you're the server, you have authority over this and over other people. So that will run this end. If, however, this guy here, the client calls it, what that node's going to say is, you're not the server, so we're not going to allow you to do, like we're not going to say you have authority over all the other players, all the other objects in the world, so we're going to run this remote. So it's just a way to delegate what does what. Um, so for the network authority, we can easily just run the top one. So we're going to add in a little print string here, I'm going to say, Server changed the mesh, and then we're going to run update mesh, which is this guy here. Um, we're actually going to just to make it a little bit clearer, we're going to grab this new mesh here, pop it in there just so we've, we can actually set a different mesh based on whether we're running on the server or on the client. So we can go back and forth rather than having to exit out every time to test. So when the server does it, we'll change to the stairs. And now down here, we want to do print string. Client changed the mesh. Now there is a problem here. We have run this exact logic before from the client and we know it doesn't work. So what we need to do is get the client to then tell the server to run it. So what we want to do is create another event. So add custom event, call this client update mesh. So we'll just plug that in there, client update mesh. So it's all ready to go. And we want to use this one here. So we'll go update mesh. Now, obviously at the moment that's not changing any authority there. We'll plug this one in here and just give that a new mesh. So we'll make this one change it to the ramp. This one here, what we want to do 
is tell it to run on the server. So you've got these options here again, there's this one run on server. Just click up to that and reliable. So what we're doing here is when you press Q, you check whether it's a server or not. If it's a server, we go ahead and run it. That's fine. Server has authority over things. It's allowed to do that, so we let it go. If, however, you're not the server, you're the remote, or you don't have authority, you're the remote, which is the client in this case, then what we're going to do is do the print string again, and then run the event on the server. So then that runs this guy here, which is set to run from the server and replicate to all the clients. It runs this from the server with that new input. We'll just test this out. This should work now. Server does it. Yep. Player does it. And there we go. So I did it in both server, player, or client rather, not player. Okay, guys. So that was just a really, really simple rundown on how event replication works and how you can trigger events on the client but still have them run through the server. Now, if you were to do events that are more complicated that require checks and balances, so let's say firing a gun, you would, during the portion that's running on the server, perform that check on the server, so then the server has control over whether the player is actually allowed to fire. Please let me know how helpful that was. If um, there's anything else I can cover, like that sort of stuff, let me know and I will get onto it. Cheers.